देवी प्रसन्न बदने करुणावतारे दिव्योज्जलदूतिमयी श्री जगत जनित्री कल्याणकारिणी बरा भयदानशीले मातर्विराज सतत मम हृत्सरोजे ब्रह्मस्वूपी शिवे शुभदे शरण्ये चैतन्यदायिनी भवां बुधिपात नेत्री शांति प्रदेशु विमले सकलार्तिनाशे मातर्विराज सतत मम हृत्सरोजे ओं शांति 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 ओ डिवाइन मदर गॉडेस विद द ग्रेसिय स्माइल ओ इनकर्नेशन ऑफ इन्फिनिट कम्पैशन यू शाइन विद डिवाइन ग्लो ओ मदर ऑफ द थ्री वर्ल्ड्स यू टेक केयर ऑफ आवर वेलफेयर एंड रिमूव आवर फेयर ओ मदर डोएल फॉर एवर इन द लोटस ऑफ माई हार्ट ओ एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ ब्राह्मण मोस्ट ब्यूटिफुल एंड ऑफ स्पीशस मन our refuge you grant spiritual awakening and take us across the ocean of this world you are purity itself the grantor of peace and the destroyer of misery o oh mother dwell forever in the lotus of my heart om peace 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 be unto us all holy mother श्री शारदा द मदर ऑफ कंपैशन मदर ऑफ इन्फिनिट ब्लैसिंग्स एंड बोन एंड बेनेडिक्शन अकॉर्डिंग टू क्रिस्टोफर ईशरूड वी हेयर दैट राम कृष्ण वॉज डिफाइंड एज ही वॉज ए फेनोमेना really shri ramakrishna's life and teachings give new light on the spiritual life of the human kind parallelly we can also say that holy mother sarada devi's life was a phenomenon and more because the principles of spiritual life which are pronounced in the scriptures the experiences of the ultimate truth in which shri ramakrishna used to remain merged remain far beyond our reach and understanding same we find in holy mother no expression of that but being established in that same realm of spiritual depth and dignity holy mother sarada stands in the supreme brilliance being a beacon of light before the world her unbounded love for the children of the world her motherly loving concern for everyone suffering her relentless attempt to take away the physical emotional psychological pain and suffering of everyone makes her the very special and unique in our life that is the mother and her compassion is limitless no boundary or parameter can be done out of it and it's springing from where this unbounded love of holy mother it springs not from just a superficial feeling of oneness but it is springing from the depth of our feeling of oneness oneness with the whole universe oneness with every being who she saw around that's why she used to say people come and fall and cry so i give all my blessings out of compassion 
compassion this compassion is based on the unitarian experience of that oneness with the whole universe that is the vedantic conclusion that oneness with brahman and atman she does not see anyone different that's why in her eyes everyone there is a position of everyone a most illiterate person to a highly educated person a man of position in the world and a person who has no recognition in the world a man of purity and a person of most impure character mother is standing there in the same way so to a friend a fellow being seeing that bad and lowly condition of another that's why our compassion normally grows in different levels one level we love our friend we become compassionate to a friend when we see a fellow being seeing his bad condition or low financial condition or other difficulties you feel some type of compassion that love and compassion may be there and it lingers for some days no if someone comes for such help and you have certain something at least you have nothing your sympathy remains for some days but that sympathy goes away soon after some time when days pass your love your affection your sympathy will reduce just a short time it lingers for a short time afterwards the same person who loves and who is sympathetic tries to start finding out the fault of that person who is helped compassion there was maybe to gain a good name i am a good person i am compassionate person or to be honored in the society people will say oh he is very kind and compassionate a good and reputable man of charity but holy mother's compassion is based on the constant experience of that the highest truth of vedanta aham brahmasmi tattvam asi the philosophy i am that absolute and thou art that so thou and me made of the same constituent element only in the realm of expression people are different so this is the uniqueness of holy mother's compassion and her compassion was no bound boundary of it that's why we read the life more of small incidents which makes it so much glorious and so much attractive and it attracts everyone because of the simplicity and purity of it her compassion was not limited to the pure soul like vivekananda brahmananda turiyananda okay that these are great souls and their love and affection was so limitless but it is not ending there her love was extraordinary devotees towards nag mahasai we find gopalasma ram the other other pronounced people of very deep devotion in a circle of people of ramakrishna family but it went on to the people who were considered impure in the eyes of the society those who are impure in the eyes of the society to the people of low caste in the society those days there is caste system distinction that was for them also it flow people of low character even her love flew unconditionally to the animals who have no voice to express their suffering and that that is the beauty of holy mother that her life is a silent depiction of the highest ideal of vedanta how it can be made manifest in ramakrishna mission's ideal is placed atmana moksha and jagat hita ha huh? what actually holy mother lived 
what we are just to follow, seeing not compassion. Compassion I am talking about from Holy Mother because it is what she did, she kept her mind down to bring it to our closeness to us so that we can feel the divinity of soul. And the ideal which has been given to Ramakrishna order by Sri Ramakrishna and Vivekananda priesthood, and Mother was the living example of that. How to serve everyone in, this, in the view of that oneness, the idea of Brahman. So Holy Mother's life, that's why it is a silent depiction of the highest ideal of Vedanta in our day-to-day -day life. There is no external false glamour, nor high-sounding and complicated physical expressions of scriptures, terminological in her words, but a very simple and loving touch of heart. Simple word, my child, my son, a sweet word from her mouth could take away all the physical pains and agonies, emotional sufferings, and even intellectual confusions. That is the uniqueness of Holy Mother. Her words are so simple, at the same time so poetic and profound, source of inspiration and joy to people of the present, and it will be for future to come. So here we find that is the mother, compassionate mother, her advent. Who will understand that? So we find that in Mahapurush Maharaj, Swami Shivananda, whose birthday was yesterday, he was talking about Holy Mother to a girl who was brought by her mother to Mahapurush Maharaj. And the mother was telling that I don't want to get my daughter married. So please bless. He was she was talking to Mahapurush Maharaj. And I have understood, mother said, the mother of the girl told that I have understood what this world is, is full of suffering and pain. I don't want my daughter to go through that path. So please bless so that she remains unmarried and lead a spiritual life. And while blessing her, Mahapurush Maharaj gave two ideals. First of all, she said, call on the master with your whole being and remain pure. And the master is the father, mother, husband, friend and everything. That was the advice of Mahapurush Maharaj. And then he talked about Holy Mother. Mahapurush Maharaj talked about Holy Mother. said, <clears throat> you must have read the life of our Holy Mother. She is the ideal for the womanhood of this age all over the world. Her life is wonderful. She accepted human body and lived like an ordinary housewife, though in reality she was none other than the mother of the universe, the primal divine energy, Adda, Shakti. This is all Swami Shivananda talking to the mother of that girl. That mother, she is presenting the ideal of Holy Mother and asking to hold on in the life, the ideal of mother in their own personal life. And said that she is the ideal of womanhood of this age. So in this age, for the good of humanity, the whole world, it is Holy Mother's advent. Her life is wonderful. And she, my mother, accepted a human body and lived like an ordinary housewife. Though in reality, she was none other than the mother of the universe, the primal divine energy. Very difficult to understand. Mahapurush Maharaj is saying, it is though her simple life appears to be very ordinary, but she is the mother of the universe. 
It's not a language you say simply. What is the mother of the universe is what? The whole universe comes out of her. And that's why Mahapurush Maharaj says she is the primordial energy or primal divine energy, Adya Shakti, the Shakti, the power. The Brahman and the power. Then he said, she was one of those who are enumerated in the scriptures as the ten Mahavidyas, Kali, Tara, Durga, etc., etc. So she is one of them. She came down to earth, to the to earth as the counterpart of the master to complete his spiritual mission in this age. The Swamiji also said, no. The mother came, Sri Ramakrishna jointly came, joint endeavor. And how can ordinary mortals understand her? Even we could not understand her in the beginning. So, Samma, Sami, uh, Shivananda talking to that girl's mother, that even she is the mother divine, she is the Adya Shakti, the primordial energy from which the whole universe has come out. And it is very difficult to understand because ordinary mortals cannot understand her. And she's talking what the ordinary people, we even could not understand her in the beginning. She hide her divinity so completely that it was not possible to recognize her real nature. The master alone knew who she really was. And Samiji knew a little. These expressions are very remarkable to understand. To understand the mother, that's why it is not mother not to understand, but to feel that she is my mother. That's the simplest thing. If we think that there is a mother for me, that's why Holy Mother said in one place, no? You are not to understand so many things, but you understand I am your mother, no? That story when the Kali, uh, the Shibu Dada, the Shibu, the nephew was going and mother was going to Jairamati or Jairamati to Kamarpukur and Shibu Dada was carrying some bag on, on, on his head. He was a small boy. And suddenly he asked Holy Mother, Mother, who are you? And Mother didn't pay attention. Well, I don't talk about that. Come, follow. We have to go because the sun is setting. We have to reach before the sun sets. And then again, Shibuda said, No, tell me, who are you? Then Mother still said, Why are you bothering? Come. And then Mother went ahead and here, that the Shibu is not following, and then turned back and saw that she is sitting somewhere else. And he, what has happened to you? Well, you please tell me who are you first. If you tell me, then I will go, otherwise I am sitting here. And mother was really under that condition, expressed herself. People talk about, some say, I am Mother Kali, some say Durga, but I am your auntie. Come to the conclusion, finish. Hiding her divinity. There's no question you need not have to understand I am Mother Durga, Kali, Shiva or whatever. That divinity will not be able to fathom. And Mahapurush Maharaj is saying, the master alone knew who is, that's why you, what master said, she is Saroda Saraswati. She is the mother of Saroda. Her name is Saroda. She is Saraswati. They give her of all wisdom, material knowledge, intellectual knowledge, spiritual knowledge, ultimate knowledge of freedom. She is the giver of everything. So, they said, and I am Kali, I am Durga, some say I am this, I am that, but forget that. I am your auntie. Only love as auntie. That's enough. That's the point, beauty of Holy Mother hiding. And that's just opposite to uh, the whole world, how it moves. If I have little quality or not, I make it a thousandfold and just beating my drum, I am such, I am such, I am such, no? And here is the Divine Mother, Mother of the Universe, hiding herself in such a way. And even when pestered and when she was bound to respond to that, she says, oh, oh, oh 
forget about people say like that but i am your auntie that come to the relationship with that relationship you can easily reach it is like the example goes it is like the, in the snow peak in the himalayan range no it is all snow 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 it is very difficult to go there and touch that snow but when that snow melts and comes down in the form of ganga holy ganga the same comes down then we can touch that ganga water so holy mother is like ganga coming down from this high altitude of the spiritual peaks of himalayas which is rama krishna brahman atman who you see are all all this big thing but she comes down out of compassion that is the compassion it mother and her compassion flows for everyone no the ganga water if you look at that how people use for their material needs also if you follow the watch the flow of mother ganga you will see people are cleaning their clothing people are taking shower people are taking bucket of water to fetch into the garden then there also someone is taking in the temple to sprinkle ganga water the same ganga is used in so many ways but this is the beauty that's why if one touches ganga one becomes pure sri ram krishna said you know ganga bari brahma bari this water of the ganga is like the water of the divine plain of brahman is that brahman in a molten form <laughs> the snow peaks molten molten brahman is ma sarada how does it look and mother it was utilized like that mother mother is just taking care of everybody and mother has been used in so many ways no the, the, the nephew what you call the brothers are teasing and trying to get more money from her thinking that my sister has much money he is now many big people rich people are uh, her disciple so they are looking at mother using the mother ganga huh on that way to utilize their clothing and washing their cloth and making some something material huh so material to spiritual so ganga gives the purity so holy mother is an example of that that's why who will understand that holiness that purity which is the brahman melted and taken the form of mother sarada's form sami ji knew only few Sa- mahapurush maharaj says maharaj master not only knew who she really was and sami ji knew a little before proceeding to the west is mahapurush maharaj again sami ji revealed his plan only to holy mother and when her blessings with her blessings he crossed the ocean the holy mother too blessed him from the bottom of her heart and said quote my son come back as a victorious hero may the goddess of learning sit on your tongue so that was the blessings that is exactly what happened with the holy mother's blessings sami ji conquered the world he sometimes declared that holy mother is even greater than the master this is sami vivekananda declared mahapurush maharaj is quoting that and so deep was his reverence for holy mother the master also declared should she who live in the con- concert tower meaning holy mother become angry with anyone at any time it would not be possible even for me to save him uh, it is said that uh, if 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 brahma vishnu eh, and shiva will not be able to protect ramakrishna said to hridaya hridaya you mistreat me that's okay but don't do with her that means holy mother and if she gets annoyed and then there is no place for you no one can protect you in the earth or heaven or hell whether brahma vishnu or shiva they are all powerless so she is the power so that that is the holy mother's glory has been mentioned master declared that there will be no not possible even for me to see so why holy mother come so mahapurush maharaj's words are here 
So one point, he said, Holy Mother accepted a human body in order, point one, to awaken womanhood all over the world. They accepted human body in order to awaken the motherhood or womanhood of all over the world. See how soon after her advent an awakening has come among women in all the countries. It's not in India. See, look at that. We in our lifetime we can understand how much change has happened in the life of the women in every country. Their freedom and Mahapurush Maharaj continues, they are now determined to build up an all-round and perfect life for themselves and to back progress in all direction. So this is the growth. Sri Ramakrishna came and Holy Mother came as Holy Mother as an ideal before the world and that to awaken the cosmic motherhood and to so that they, they, they become equal partner in the life struggle as also in spirituality. They are now determined to build up an all-round and perfect life for themselves and to progress in all directions. Yet, this is not the end of it. This is just the beginning. So, this awakening of the women is not from the slavery only, but it is opening up new channels. What Mahapurush says, but it is the only what you see, the development and freedom reached uh, in the life of the women of all countries, yet this is not yet the end of it. This is just the beginning. And he con continues, then the Vedic age produced wonderful women like Gargi, Maitri, Sita, Sabitri and others. This age will see the birth of even nobler character among women. So we see that now how many uh, women gurus uh, who are highly uh, recognized and acknowledged and respected. Sarada Mott, if we go look at the nuns and see their presidents and also the other women, gurus in the world. Nobler characters of women. A very striking awakening has come among women in all fields of life. In spirituality, in politics, science, art, literature and so on. It is going to be more striking in future. This is all divine play. Ordinary mortals cannot grasp that. So this Holy Mother is this is the Mother's glory. But Sami Shivananda Maharaj has presented before us that her coming is to awaken the womanhood of all the world and the future. Sami Vivekananda carried the same idea that the Gargis and Maitreis and Sitas and Savitris will be all born again, reborn in the whole world. They will be all Brahmabhadinis, the knowers of the truth, highest truth. And that is happening now and it will go on and manifest much more. And he also mentioned that Mahapurusha said that the Holy Mother was the mother of all. Her kindness, her forbearance, her patience, were wonderful. How little of her do we worship, we were ourselves know. But she has out of her mercy, let me realize that she is no other than the mother of the universe. None can understand her real nature unless she is in her mercy, reveals it to us. So here is another proof what Mahapurush Maharaj says, that mother is the embodiment of all kindness, all forbearance, all patience. And by her grace, she says, Mahapur Mother has let me realize that what is Holy Mother? She is the none other than the mother of the universe. So it is a con again affirmed truth that mother is the mother of the universe, not in only words, but in the experience of so many saints. Now we find that how this 
compassion, how this purity transmitted through her life. We, we different so many facets of Holy Mother's life. So we'll, we'll focus today on how her grace entered into the life of ordinary people and how many people had, had their illumination and realization. So one day there is a story that one Sri Ramakrishna is to, in any mantra, initiation, Ma is to give initiation. But that initiation can be divided into four categories. What first was that before coming to Holy Mother, some would have come to Mother, first they had some dream and Mother appeared in the dream and even gave them the mantra. And then after waking up from that mantra, under certain condition, they are asked to, oh, there is a Divine Mother, Ramakrishna's Divine Concert. So they used to come from far away distance and then see Mother. And looking at Mother and talking to her, they are overwhelmed. It is the same Mother who appeared in dream and gave them the mantra. So through dream, Mother used to give mantra, that's one. Second, they were, they used to come to Mother being tormented by life's suffering and pain and agonies and bereavement, some are disease. So they came and Mother gave them their blessings, the mantra even, and removed their earthly suffering as also spiritual suffering. Third, another group of devotees who came in touch with the Ramakrishna's disciples and they came to know about Holy Mother and thought if they come to Mother then their life will be more spiritual or more peaceful. So they used to come. And fourth category, they do not know anything. They do not know anything of Mother. They have no plan. They have not heard anything, but just met Mother and got her guess and they are released from the bondage of birth and death. So these are the four categories of devotees where Mother conferred her grace of blessings of the mantra, initiation. I find that one... Uh, There is one gentleman saw that he was in staying in Bangladesh. And Borishal is the name of the place. And his name was Premananda Dasgupta. He was in Bangladesh. In those days it is not so easy to come. To come to Calcutta itself, it takes probably two days or something. Then go to Jairambati another three three days, four days, walking or some other minimum conveyance by bullock cart and this and that. But he saw in Borishal, being in Bangladesh, that time it is East Bengal, around midnight, around uh, much after midnight, around 3 o'clock in 3 a.m., he saw a dream that one divine, one mother, form of mother, appeared in the dream and is saying, you are still sitting here. You have grown old. There is this auspicious time. I have come covering hundreds of miles, crossing seven seas. And with much trouble I have reached here. Come. Come with me. As soon as my dream broke, I could understand that this mother is asking me to come. I have never seen mother before this. Even I have not seen the photograph. What the question of seeing her, even not the photograph. And of course those days mother's photos were not available. And soon after that I started moving towards Jairambati. And I reached Jairambati and I reached the 
out the courtyard, outside courtyard, and I saw that Holy Mother was going to take a shower or dip into the pond. Suddenly, I found what I saw in my dream, that same mother and standing in front of me, and I was astonished. And looking at her, mother, I, I was wondered, but mother didn't express any surprise. Rather, she, very, she told, called me in a very sweet, motherly, affectionate tone, as if she knows me forever, and my eternal relative, as it were. And she said, my child, you have come. I am waiting for you to come. Go now, quickly finish your bath eh? and come to my room. I am also going to take a dip, then I will call you and give you, I will call you for mantra. See, that is the grace, Holy Mother, unconditional. In dream, someone having some dream in some place who does not know what is Mother, have not seen the photograph of Mother even. And see, just when they first saw each other, that dream figure and this Mother figure becomes so overwhelming that she could not, he could not understand what is happening. But mother, he understood that that is the mother who appeared in my dream as is now here. But mother didn't show any expression of surprise or anything, as if it is a very natural thing for her. And she says, I am waiting for you. You have come, go, take a deep into the uh, water and take a shower and then come to me and I am also coming. Another story, a very common story, we all know. It is heard from Gaurima. Gaurima told this story. That in the station of Vishnupur, where Holy Mother used to go and catch a train to come to Calcutta or go back from Calcutta to that place, and then used to go by Bullock cart to the village. In the station, Sishma, Holy Mother, just is waiting there for the train to come. Suddenly, one porter, very poor porter, seeing mother, she ran, he ran and came to me, came to mother, and say, Tu meri janki, tujhe maine kitni din se khojaya tha, itne roj tu kaha thi. She is very in this innocent Hindi language, but he is saying, Tu meri janki, you are my mother Janaki, mother Sita. You are my mother Sita. Tujhe maine kitne dino se khoja tha. I am searching for you, oh mother, for so many days. Itne roz tu kaha thi? Where were you in so many days away from me? And saying so, he started crying and profuse tears flow down. And then Ma was first asked her him to be uh, consoled and asked him to bring one flower and see he go went to a neighboring place and brought a flower and offered at the feet of the mother and mother instantly gave the mantra in the station railway station sitting waiting for the train to come not knowing who is this porter he, now, what we say, if anyone wants to come for initiation, we say, hey, what is your name? What is your qualification? What is your background? Why did you know Ramakrishna? Why, what book have you read? See, this person is a porter. See, he is the mother. She is waiting for the train. And he could understand it is Janki Mai. It is, you are my mother. See, innocent heart, pure heart. And how no name is necessary, no introduction is necessary. This mother's love, flow, compassion flows unconditional. Just, and he's seeking for it. And mother instantly conferred that highest blessings. That who is that devotee in the form of that porter? 
probably he has seen mother Sita in this form of our earthly mother. Otherwise, how could we recognize? Otherwise, how after search for a long time he could recognize and see mother and understand it is the mother Sita for her. We find that there is another story, uh, a, a dream story. Swami Tanmayanand, who became a monk of our order, he was then in the household, in a family, uh, as we are in our home, and he was having a dream. And he saw that there is no building or houses or anything, it is only a open meadow. And one monk, full of effulgence, is calling me. Hey, get up. Don't you want to go? Come, come, come. Called me three times. And in the dream, I jumped out and came near the door. But I could not open the door. Uh, someone from back was pulling me and I fell down there. And people used to think that in the night time people get some ghost call. <laughs> So it was like that. This incident is over. I had, after a year or so, I felt pain in the stomach. And we went to doctors. And doctors could not do anything. And the pain became so severe that I was going to kill myself. So, in the dead of night, I went to find one type of Trees are there where there is poison. It's called kolke pool. In Bengali, they call kolika pool. One type of poisonous flower which you offer for Shiva. The white, uh, what is the name of the flower? What? Dotura. Ah, dotura. Dotura pool. So, that in our garden you will find that there is one variety which is little uh, with um, more of poisonous. So, I was going to search for that to find out and then I will eat more and I will die. I was searching for that, suddenly I heard a voice. Why will you die? Become a monk. I, I called you one time, you didn't come that time. That's why you are suffering from this disease. You go to Baneshwar and bring this, there is some medicine you will get and then so he, next day, went to that Shiva Maneshara and understood that there is a holy man and he found that in that holy man's house there is a picture of holy Sri Ramakrishna. And that is the person who went and gave me this dream experience. Then I came to Calcutta and I went to Holy Mother and got her blessings. So, Mother said that, okay, you got the diksha, now he wanted to be a monk, because the monk, that is the instruction, you be a monk while you will die. Eh? The death, death is actually death of the physical body. That's actually we do that. We vows, we take, you know. That that's, this life is dead, new real life journey. So, so he said, Ma, give me Brahmacharya, the initiation ceremony. Ma, mother said, stay in this way and do some spiritual practices for some time and then you come to Jairambati. And then, then he went and mother gave him the Brahmacharya mantra and also other practices. And he asked, did you have the same pain of your stomach pain? Uh, mother said, how could you understand that stomach pain issue? Then we find that one, then one, one day he asked that I have not seen Ramakrishna, but I am seeing you. Then mother said, if 
that, that this Swami said, Mother, if Ramakrishna himself is God, God himself, then who are you? Then Holy Mother told that who will be me other than the Divine Mother? And as soon as I heard, my whole body was overwhelmed with joy. And then I asked, please show me Ramakrishna. Then mother said, my child, can it be so easy? You do much more meditation and practice, then you will be able to see. But what you have seen in your dream, that is not something wrong. You know, all the dreams related to the gods and goddesses, they are not false. And especially if you can see in the early morning. Then I said, I miss this Tanmayananda Swami said, this is the, the Tanmayananda Swami said, uh, Ma, <clears throat> ah, ah, Ma, that will not do. You are trying to just um, escape. Mother said, See, Ramakrishna touched Noren. And as a result, Noren cried out. Sri Ramakrishna said, There is no such person capable of holding high spiritual power rather than Noren. Then what more shall I say? Then he said, Mother, do whatever you like, but this is my prayer. Give me your touch. But Mother said it will happen in later on. Mother, in, in very... Uh, so Mother was telling another story that uh, sometimes she used to express her, her divine glory in this way. One day, there is a gentleman, Prabodh Babu, as a school teacher, is to come to uh, mother and in the Jagadamba ashram there is a place where the main folks can sit and in that room Ram, this Kedar Baba, Kedar, Kedar was talking to Holy Mother and at that time there was a worship group of people worshipping uh, what you call the demigods, no? Demigods, you know, it is very much used by the, uh, what do you call, our Hare Krishna people. Demigods means they are gods, but lower departments. They, they manage lower departments and smaller departments. Big department, law, small department. So, the Sosti Puja, Sosti Puja is a colloquial, those who want a child, they worship that goddess, whose name is Sosti, Sosti Mata. And, these people are with the beating of the drum and this and that, taking that Sosti Mata and Puja for the worshipping Sosti Mata, all the ingredients. And naturally, these sophisticated people like Prabodh Babu is a school teacher. And they, they, what type of this Puja worship? Eh? Why not call God? God will give you anything. So they are disgusted with this type of worship. So they got annoyed. Kedar be, become become so annoyed, he said, oh, stop this nonsense. As soon as Kedar Baba, or Kedar Babu said that, Ma suddenly said, O Ki Kedar, what is that, O Kedar? Am I not everything? Why are you getting annoyed? They are worshipping me in the form of Sasti. Another story is there, mother is sweeping the baranda one day and at that time one poor lady came to bake some food and, and suddenly mother was sweeping and said, Oh, I cannot work anymore. In the infinite hands I am working, but still I cannot finish my work. Suddenly. Saying so, she just stopped. And this Rita Nanda Swami, another Swami, monk, he was sitting a little distance away from mother. I was sitting there and I was taking my breakfast. 
and I I was startled to hear what mother said. I am working in a infinite hands. Then looking at him, looking at that Rita Ananda, mother said, smiled and said, see, I have only two hands. And what am I talking about? Hun, in limitless hands, infinite hands. What am I talking? And this, she started laughing and started again sweeping. These are glimpses how mother herself is revealing her divine glory. But it's very difficult to catch because if you miss the one word, mother was sweeping and talking to herself. Oh, I cannot do work anymore. Even I am able to finish the work with infinite number of hands I am working. No, So that is the Divine Mother. There is one other uh, Nolini. <clears throat> Nolini, his nephew, niece, was going to, was very restless to go to Benaras. And as soon that request was placed before Holy Mother, then Nolini said, Auntie, please send me to Benaras. Ma said, Nolini, why are you becoming restless to go to Benaras? Why are you talking Benaras, Benaras? And you are talking about Mother Annapurna. Is it not this Annapurna? This is not the Annapurna. You want to go to Kasi, to Benaras to see that the deity, this is not the, that. So this is the point that in certain areas, the Holy Mother expressed and proved that she is that Divine Mother. Now, Suren Babu is relating another story that before meeting Holy Mother, I didn't know much of it, but I used to see in the, my dream that with Ramakrishna, there is a divine form of the Mother. I used to think that she is maybe the wife of some devotees of Ramakrishna. And for, again, when I heard about Mother, then I came to know that she is staying in Jairambati. I wrote a letter to her. And when I wrote, after dropping that letter, I thought, Oh, Ma is Jagadamma. Ma is the mother of the universe. What I wrote, she knows before my writing this. So therefore I didn't post that letter and kept it under my pillow. Within a day or two, my friend, another friend, Durges, he went to see mother. And he also saw that mother is telling, see my child, one of my devotee from Silong, he wrote some letter. Read that. And don't say this dream, divine dream, to any other person. That's why I kept it within my myself. And after some time, they let me read that letter. And when I read that letter, I was surprised to see that how mother could understand there and appeared in my dream and talked about that letter itself. And there he requested that devotee to come to Kothar in Orisha to see Holy Mother. So this type of many, many experiences, uh, we find that in the devotee's life where she, Holy Mother, appeared and even gave initiation to some people. Mother used to give initiation, how? So she used to give, sometimes she used to do the puja, sometimes not. And before giving the initiation, she used to call the disciple to come and sit by her side and then ask her to do sipping that mantra. Uh, 
Om Vishnu, Om Vishnu, etc. And then is to give the mantra. So that was a very simple type of giving the mantra. And could give mantra at any time and any point of time, in any time, any place, any situation. So normally others, ordinary gurus have their own formulas, but there is no such formula for Holy Mother. Surendra Rai said, when I was in my uh, residential school, in staying in the hotel, uh, hostel, I saw in the early morning that there is a link, there is a ray of light connected from Sisi Holy Mother's house in Udbodhan, Calcutta, to the Kali Ghat, where Kali Ghat Mother's Kalima is there. So I went to see Mother, not knowing this, but I saw this. I went to Bag Bazar and I, I hear that Ma is not there, Mother has gone to Kali Ghat. That very day, I went in the afternoon and I saluted Mother and Ma asked, Oh, you came in the morning? I said, Yes, Ma. Uh, and then I referred. They, what I saw, uh, I, I referred to my one dream to Mother. And then Holy Mother said, What is the need of all this news? If you have seen what you have seen, in the form of light connecting that here and that what you call Kaligat. Whether it is true or not, I am asking her again and again. And then Holy Mother said, yes, you have seen, what you have seen is right. Uh, and that, in that mode, I become overwhelmed. And then I asked, Ma, do you give initiation? And can you tell me? What you give? Then Holy Mother told me that this is the mantra I give. And actually I was surprised that is the mantra. I also got it in the dream. So these are different places. Another incident, incident that one, um, one person came to get initiation from Mother. He belonged to a very low caste. Uh, and then Holy Mother told that, no, 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 I don't give initiation to the uh, low caste people like that. She didn't say, but she didn't offer the initiation. And there was another gentleman who was Holy Mother's disciple. And then he said to Holy Mother, Ma, are you not the mother of the universe? Then Mother said, how do I know what I am? I cannot say, oh mother, what you have to do, but are you not the mother of the universe? Ma didn't respond anything, but she called in the afternoon and called that person who wanted initiation and gave her the initiation mantra. So this is the flow of compassion. Ramakrishna's flow of compassion make more accessible through the Divine Mother Sarada and that touched the hearts of so many innumerable people. And we do not know their name, we know their, don't know their reference and their quality, capacity, but mother's love flowed uninterruptedly. And that is the mother we need to meditate upon, the mother of love, mother of compassion, mother of holiness, mother of purity, and not judgmental mother. She loves whatever the condition of the child is, whether you are a pure or impure is not, you are a child. Whether you are a rich or not, you are a child. Whether you are a man or a woman, you are a child of mother. And we are all children of mother. So let mother's compassion dawn on our heart. Thank you. Jai Ma.
is the announcement next maju kanundu next sunday oh importance of grace okay next sunday expre uh, uh, importance of grace in spiritual life that is will be sami shottamayananda will be speaking so i have one question i see that somebody uh, you are asking that why should we learn from what we learn from holy mother that suffering a she suffered from sympathy and empathy so mother was all through what she did had uh, to be sympathetic and but your question is that what we can do though as a model how we can strive to live should we also strive to suffer and feel the tremendous sympathy and empathy that's a big question yes mother's life is an ideal we cannot be mother what mother does because she totally egoless so whenever she identifies with anyone she can feel the trouble and she has the spiritual power to uplift them we know the story that she suffered we are thinking that she is one with brahman so she does not suffer no so as long as she is in the physical body she suffers this pain is pain but they can separate out themselves from that pain that is the beauty of them but we being attached we love someone means we get attached that is the problem of us can we love detached love that is holy mother attached love detached love we have to understand make a distinction there love is love but love attachment and love detached love so holy mother is the perfect example of detached love detached love means she loves everyone identifies with the suffering of everyone and even sometimes crying you know we will let us remember the story that when someone died and as a result what happened someone died with a and came and reported to holy mother and that lady was weeping and sobbing mother started to convey the same sympathy tuned herself in the mind of the a person who is, has lost a child sympathy empathy spontaneous and she started bitterly crying herself more than the mother who lost her own child and but after that because their knowledge is so clear you know that is the physical body that is gone but what is there that is the same reality before and here so quickly they can reconcile but we cannot and we find the result is that because of that cry sympathy and empathy that person felt released that lady felt the pangs of separation gone and she was full of joy feeling that the sun is in higher position but we cannot do that we will have to understand how much is our range if we cross our range then it will be a destruction for us because we cannot bear that much strain stress and strain so spiritual life this is very important we want to be sympathetic and empathetic with the idea that in him or her is the same reality as in me or thakur is there or holy mother is there in everyone thinking that we must have to be sympathetic we must have to em- empathy practice empathy and also to do as best as we can keeping our detached outlook whenever we get attached to much is na- na- nature unless you feel for someone you cannot do anything we are in that level feeling for there are 10 people suffering i may feel for one person so my connection goes there but how we can extend that this to this to this to this all the parameter there is the only one way how can we do it we do it by to practice mother's way so mother also loved everyone they are suffering but could detach and withdraw this practice it is love for that leads us to the position of love for love's sake 
It is called the love for love's sake. And mother is an epitome of love for love's sake. So we'll have to practice that we must, otherwise there is no spiritual life. If you are selfish, if you think of yourself only day and night, my joy, my fun, my, 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 me and mine, that is not spirituality. Spirituality is unselfishness. But how will be unselfish? To think of other suffering. And other suffering to not only feeling, and when your heart feels like that, your urge will be there, what can you do for that person? Do as much as you can. Don't think you will be able to solve the problem of others. No one can do any. Can you solve your own problems? No. There is a limitation. And then we have to surrender to the divine and detach. Okay, I am not the master. God has not given me responsibility of the whole world. Huh? So if you think that responsibility, will be crazy. I was looking at one psychiatrist, uh, psychologist, came and uh, saw her. My God, she looks herself so sick and distorted. My God, you are going to help others. You are yourself drowned. You have lost your way yourself. You have no smile in your face. So this is the point we have to understand. How much I can go? In your pocket you have $10. You can give a charity. How much? Even $5, $6, $7, $8, $10. And now you borrow. $20, $100, borrow. And then you have to pay. Have you the capacity? Have you that spiritual energy, spiritual power? So don't exceed your limit within your range. You think for the good of others. Let us think like that for the welfare of others. If you cannot give anything, come to the Lord and pray, cry, Oh Lord, that person is in suffering. Please help. So that itself is uplifting and that is a sympathy. Sympathy does not mean out of the way to go and do something which I am, I'll be get drowned. I am trying to rescue somebody and instead I am going drowned into the water. So who will rescue me then? That means your ego that you can do something. But better, I think, Holy Mother's ideal if we take and also Ramakrishna order teaches us to do everything with detached outlook. Do as best as you can and give it to God. You are not the person to take whole responsibility. So I think that should be the attitude and we can... Uh, practice in our life what Holy Mother has depicted because she is mother herself so what is possible for her we cannot even think of that a little bit of that possible in our life okay three questions have come, huh? three questions have come. Okay. Huh. first question from Swarnendu was Ma Sarada an avatar of Devi Mahamaya yeah that we read today uh, that is the experience of many. Uh, uh, how do we know? Because as, as many of the, the uh, people who came and they have experienced Girish, example of Girish goes, Girish was very sick, he was dying almost. Uh, and then one Devi Murti, one Divine Mother form came and uh, she was, that was in her early childhood and then touched the forehead of that uh, in the dream of Girish and so many and then he became cured after so many years after so many years he went to see Holy Mother and as you know so Holy Mother is with a with a veil so much drowned you cannot see the face even but Girish goes just saluted and when he was going the eye the sea the eyes, see the face, just little glimpse of that face, Girish goes got it. And Ma, Girish just expressed the idea, huh, you are that mother? And mother recognized, yes, my child. So he recognized that holy mother, divine mother who appeared in that early childhood when he was dying out of the incurable disease by the touch of in the dream, he got cured. And it's the same mother who is Mother Saruda. So these are the examples. And as you know, Shibu Dada's example, he said, another example is there, someone of the devotee, uh, 
Sonnasi devotee monk was staying with mother and mother became little old by that time and naturally as we become old our veins are visible uh, it looks like old feet old hand no and he was thinking she was thinking that oh, mother is the mother of the universe uh, is is that possible is the mother of the universe and instantly he suddenly saw oh it's a divine mother it's like a young uh, powerful luminous divine self appeared there as the divine mother so these are experiences of uh, of of the people who lived with holy mother had the glimpses of that and we believe seeing the end result of mother's activity there are many people who do good to the world but holy mother's reading holy mother's book itself people get peace if she is an ordinary then how can we think that it is possible so she is the divine mother we believe in that and also another example ramakrishna if ramakrishna is an avatar will he, there is a story no who said that if ramakrishna is an avatar ramakrishna's wife will be what huh? a king huh? is married with whom with a queen no so she will be the jagadamba jagat mata that's the idea okay question from kiran in case we are not able to think of holy mother as the last thought before death will she still liberate us if we have prayed to her as much as possible during other times <laughs> yeah that is the assurance given yes if we call upon her and you can tell oh mother i do not know whether the last point i will be able to remember you my aches and pains of the body may be such or circumstances maybe that i may forget plus don't leave me mother i think if people say like that we get the assurance from many swamis they say that yes mother will come mother is not ordinary mother and mother said i am not your guru putnima because you think ramakrishna is my guru and so he is the wife so i respect that way mother no a patanoma we normally say indian culture is that any woman we call mother for the monks they talk about ma ma i am not that type of mother i am patanoma nai i am not that type of new relationship which is said superficial it is not that and i am the real mother i am the mother of this life and other life i am the eternal mother so yes i think mother is compassionate so she will do that <laughs> we hope all, we hope so monjula asks does holy mother resolve our suffering whenever we pray to her i felt she does so many times is my feeling correct yes that is i also hear that many people say you pray sincerely to mother and mother fulfills that in a miraculous way uh you can go in other way you may not find the solution but really really if you can call upon heart she does thing miraculously i have heard such stories from many spiritual people and also but that not necessarily that everything we ask mother gives that's we have to understand because she is the real mother she does not want to give what is not good for us sometimes we pray and it didn't happen then we will have to accept that also as mother's grace when mother fulfills our desire is okay mother thank mother it is your grace and if it does not happen i wanted mother but it didn't happen so thank you mother it is maybe for my good you didn't do that so if we can believe that this too and i think yes mother's grace is she listens to our prayers okay uh someone corroborates in the uh, chat holy mother may or may not be the universal mother but she is my mother oh. she answered every single one of my cries for help oh. wonderful that's that proves that she is a universal mother <laughs> otherwise how 
she will be answering your prayers, all prayers, and also prayers like us also. In many people who are sitting here or you are in your home, you see how many times you prayed and you got some response. Maybe not always because our prayer may not be so deep and also maybe it was not good for me. But in most of the cases for the good, at least if we pray, we feel peace. That's the point. We need not have to find anything else. At least we find peace that she is there. Okay. Okay, here ends our question answer. So we'll be uh, concluding with some prayer. Om Sri Ramakrishna Mayo Jeevita Isharitang Tadbhava Vikrahamai Tadabhinna Shatta Sri Ramakrishna Maya Pavaka Dipti Shakti Matar Viraja Satatang Mamarit Saroje Sachi Sukhanu Babudai Nibodha Rupe Viseshwari Pranatapal Inishid Didatri Sri Sharade Bhuvana Mangala Dibba Murte Matar Viraja Satatang Mamarit Saroje Om Shanti 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 A living goddess filled with Ramakrishna, you are the realization of his essence. You are none other than he, Ramakrishna. You are the light and energy of the Ramakrishna flame. O Mother, dwell forever in the lotus of my heart. You are the enlightenment that brings the joy of existence, consciousness and bliss. Ruler of the universe, protector of the devotees, you bring the ultimate fulfillment. O Sri Sharada, your divine form sanctifies the earth. O Mother, dwell forever in the lotus of my heart. O peace, peace, peace be unto us all. Thank you.